internet to us is everything. Especially in the area of physics and mathematics, we all read through websites, we consult websites, we look into the equations, we learn through websites. I would say the entire career of an individual revolves around websites. We also watch YouTube videos. I mean to say YouTube videos have changed everything. We watch YouTube videos, we take down notes, and the entire process of a physics and a mathematical learning, starting from classical mechanics, electromagnetism, relativity, quantum mechanics, and as well as string theory, there is everything right there on the website and YouTube videos. And we are learning through those media. But there is a problem. Have you ever thought that the websites which reflect the data, are they authentic or not? I mean to say, have you ever gone through the calculations and you have verified whether they are right or not? What are the authentic websites? Which websites will give you exactly the data or the understanding that you want? Uh, the YouTube videos sometimes create a kind of a confusion. Some of the YouTube videos are too advanced. Some of the YouTube videos uh, revolves around the idea of the teacher, not for an individual learner. Today, in this particular video, I'm going to give you the pros and cons of learning physics and mathematics through websites and YouTube videos. I'm also going to give you certain authentic websites, links, as well as the problems that you might face while you're learning through websites and YouTube videos. And I would strongly request and rather suggest you that please take those precautionary measures in order to have a clear and a better understanding in physics and mathematics. I am talking this especially to the young grads or those who are embarking their journey into physics and mathematics and you are consulting websites but there might be certain issues, might be certain problems you really, really don't know. Through my experience, I would like to explain you what are the problems that might persist in a website and YouTube videos and certain very good websites and videos you should consult with. My name is Shaunak and you're watching me on my channel Physics for Students and I welcome you to watch this video. So the first thing which is there on your screen is called reading from websites. Now let us understand that when we are learning or reading through websites, who construct those websites? Well, obviously you would say an individual, but who is that individual? Well, you might say that he or she is an aspirant or enthusiast in science or a professor or anybody else. But remember certain things that when you're reading through a website, it is one individual who has written down all those informations. Now you might say obviously physics and mathematics equations and concepts would not vary from one to another, right? The Gauss's law of electromagnetism would be the same what you say and I say. You might say that the arithmetic and the law of harmonic analysis would be the same what you say and I say. Yes, it is. But there are certain things which you should take care. The first thing which I would like to show you right on the screen, it is called the convention issue or the convention problem. Now, this is not for those who are veteran in physics and mathematics. I mean to say not for master students, but for young people, maybe college going or those who are just learning. I would like to show you that conventions vary from websites to websites. I mean to say what are the way they are writing the conventions sometimes vary from place to place. You might get confused that I have seen the convention that is there on my textbook, but on the website, right, it is reflecting something different. Okay, so the first thing which I would like to show you is this one. So sometimes you see that real number is being reflected as a bold R, which is right there on your screen, and another R, which, is, which you can also see. Now, this is actually written in a language which is called latex. I am sure those who are uh, into websites, etc., you know what latex is all about. So latex has something called blackboard bold. Okay, so this R, which you can see on your screen on the left-hand side, this is, denotes also a real number. And what you can see on the right-hand side, this also re, uh, denotes a real number. Both of them are okay, both of them are correct, just to tell you that keep an eye that this is the convention which some of the websites follow. So here I have given what is written in Wikipedia in the Cartesian coordinate system Rn with coordinates dot 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 dot. Right, so what I'm trying to tell you is that Wikipedia again uses the convention of this capital bold R, not always that, that R which I have just shown you. 
So websites will have their conventions, websites will have their differences and you need to take care which website you're consulting. So if it is this bold R, right, you can, uh, you can take and go ahead that this R is found in the textbook, no problem. And even if it is the uh, another R that also denotes real number. So don't get confused between these two signing convention. Both of them are fine. Websites have different ways of writing these conventions. The second thing which I would like to show you is this one. This is the metric tensor. Some of the websites use the convention mu nu. Some of the websites use the convention alpha beta. So not a problem. Just remember that the indices changes. Different uh, websites use different types of conventions. I might use ij, you might use n or d, depends. But not to get confused that the, webs, uh, the, the basic idea is that it reflects the metric tensor, that's it. So don't get confused by the conventions that the websites are using. Both of them denotes metric tensor with those Greek indices. Okay, the next one is called divergence, which is again comes sometimes I would say as a confusion. So div f also means divergence of the vector field f or whatever with the vector field. And this one, the, uh, the, uh, the inverted triangle, which is the nabla sign, it also denotes vec uh, divergence. So uh, some websites use the nabla sign, some websites use the div sign. Initially for the starting, for learning for the grads, we use div so that it is an acronym for divergence. Uh, some websites use the nabla operator, however nabla operator is used for some other mathematical operations also. Just to tell you that uh, let, us, uh, let us not get confused with div f and nabla f. The, the, this one which you can see on the screen, this is also denotes divergence, right? And you can see that I have uh, mentioned those partial derivatives, uh, div, uh, del v1 upon del x, one, del x, then del v2 upon del y. This is okay. I mean, so some websites use this convention to denote uh, uh, divergence. On the uh, on the next one, which you see, div f, which carries a double integration and carries a volume integral sign, that is also divergence. So just to tell you that these, I, I, I cannot list, you know, there is a huge number of these type of conventions which are being found. So just to tell you, this just came across me. So divergence, the metric tensor, the real number, natural numbers, there are a lot of other things which will come across. And um, I need to say, uh, just to be, make sure, I'm not saying that which one is right, which one is wrong. Both of them are correct. Would it have been that one is wrong and one is right, things would have been uh, become easier. There would have been no confusion. I wouldn't have been making this video. So because both of these are same, both of them are exactly the same, both of them reflects the same uh, physics formula or conventions or con I, I would say concept. The problem is that different websites are living in a different way and you might get confused because you've just started your career into mathematics or physics. So just be aware. So this part of the video, the first part, is related to conventions. Both of them are correct, but some websites use as this, some websites use that. So please don't get confused. Now check with the calculations. What I'm trying to tell you is that I'm not mentioning or naming a website, but believe me with my uh, experience in physics and mathematics, I can tell you the calculations are not always correct especially for undergrad and college going students, I, uh, I, can, I can tell you there are some websites which will uh, show you the calculation, but the end result is not correct. I'm not saying all, but some of them, yes, they are. So what I would suggest is that whenever you're going through website, especially arithmetic or algebra or trigonometry or any kind of a basic linear algebra course or uh, equation, do check the calculations. I would strongly suggest that redo the calculation once more and check it with the website's answer. Right. The reason is that if it matches, great, there is no problem. You're just redoing it. And I have just suggested in my other video that once you redo your homework, it is much, much better. That means you are innovating. You, it might come up as a new way of doing mathematics. So redo, redo, redo. Check your calculations with the websites. If it is matching, great. There is no harm in redoing the calculation. And if it is not matching, oh my dear, you need to take care of those websites. So I'm not saying all, but some of the websites do not have the right answers at the end. And you might 
take that answer because it's a website and you might find that your teacher has given it a big cross and you have secured the wrong marks in your assessment. So the advice would be please check with the final calculations of the website and redo the calculations so that it matches. Okay, so the next thing which I would like to show you, uh, you have seen uh, there on your screen, it is called do not assume anything. I mean to say whenever you are assuming certain things, you will see that the websites already assumes that you know this, 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 this. Now, how will you know that you already know those things or they have assumed those things? For example, if I'm going with uh, uh, Maxwell's equations to learn, then the website assumes that you know what is a cross product, what is a dot product, what is an electric field, all those things, the basics of uh, uh, vector analysis, a little bit of integral and differential calculus, and then they will uh, uh, start, you know, uh, explaining those things. So check with the website and the understanding that whether they assume certain things and if they assume certain things do you know those things or not if you don't know those things then when you're reading through the website in the process it will create a huge amount of confusion so please do check whether your website or your uh, the website that you're reading assume certain things you will see that when you're going through certain websites, you will see assumed linear algebra, differential equation, calculus, calc 1, calc 2, this, this, this. That means the website is assuming that you really know those things. And if you don't know these things, it is your job to understand those things and you should come back and you should start learning. And if you do know those things or know a little bit more than that, absolutely no problem. I mean to say there is no problem, but read through the website's content I, I mean to say not all websites clearly tell you that we assume to be knowing those things but be careful understand and do not assume anything I mean to say that this particular do not assume anything means do not give, uh, get a presumption that okay so the website will teach me those no a website is being done by an individual an individual has a certain intellect level and based on that intellect level I am making a video. You will see most of my videos, those the subscribers, I'm thankful to you. If you're watching this video, you will see most of my web, uh, videos a little bit very long, 45 minutes, even more than an hour. Why? Because I do not assume that you know these, these, these things. So if I'm say, uh, uh, teaching you a dot product, I will go back and teach you a dot product. If, I, if I'm teaching you determinant of a matrix in a video, then I will go back and teach you a little bit about the determinant of a matrix. That is why the span of my video is a little bit longer, right? But there are certain websites which will give you a very crisp and a brief analysis and an understanding of a concept, assuming those things. So my uh, request to you would be do not assume anything. Check to the website, check on the understanding, whether they assume and whether you have the required knowledge. This is very important. Select a website which makes you solve a problem. Now, why I will tell you the reason is that suppose I am teaching you special relativity or linear algebra or basic trigonometry, right? So I go on teaching you special relativity, the twin paradox, this, that, invariance of the speed of light, Lorentz transformation, Lorentz force, everything. And I end the understanding. I end the chapter. No problem, right? But what happens is that for uh, students who are, uh, you know, learning this concept, you then go back and when you start solving sums, or I would say problems, you are unable to do that. Why? Because you have just understood the concept. Why? Because you cannot solve the numericals. Why? Because the website has not given you enough scope that you solve problems. So one is most of the website, I won't say all of them, I will just tell you what are the great websites that you, you should go through, but most of the websites quickly give a theoretical or a basic understanding of the concept and whoosh, they are vanished. I mean to say nothing more is there. So I would say that websites, you learn a Lorentz transformation, you learn special relativity, you learn the equation E equals to MC square, and then there are problems to solve. Until you solve a problem, the learning is not complete. Until you sit down and solve numerical problems, the learning is not complete. Please try to understand this. So go through websites which gives you solve problem. That means you learn Lorentz transformation, you learn linear algebra, you learn, uh, say for example, determinant of a matrix, the basic concept, and then solve one, two, three, four, right? 
that really helps you, isn't it? That you really solve problems. So check out the websites who doesn't only give you a theoretical or an overview understanding of the, uh, of the concept of either physics or mathematics, but it also helps you to solve the problems. Close down the workbook and solve the problems and then go back to the website and check whether the answer is not. And this automatically relates to me what I told you that please, please, please do check with the calculation of the websites whether they are right or wrong because this is going to matter in your future career. So what I'm try always trying to tell you is that do go for websites which other than giving you the basic understanding of the concept will also ask you to solve problems and that's simply great. It will make you a better, strong, solid foundation of whatever you are learning. Now, I am not going to teach you what is uh, authenticity or something technical, but here is something which I would like to tell you that check the authenticity of the website. How will you check? Here, right on your screen, I have given you something which is called HTTPS. Okay, secured SSL encryption. I really don't know. I'm not a tech kind of a person too much into that. So those websites which you will see that has got HTTPS are much more secure than HTTP. Here right on your screen, I have opened my laptop. You see, I was working with uh, some of my websites, uh, some of the equations. So you see physics for students also have got HTTPS. So I would like to show you, see this example. Uh, this one has got HTTPS and the, this one has got just HTTP. So those websites which have got an HTTPS is a better way to learn and understand. And I would strongly recommend that if you're learning physics or mathematics, please go through the website which has got an extension HTTPS. Also, uh, five important points quickly to give you an overview. A privacy policy, there should be a privacy policy, a return policy, contact information. That means, for example, I in my website have given my name, what my qualification, what do I do, my mobile number, everything is there. That means in physics for students, here is a person called Shaunak B. You can immediately contact me and I will respond. That means authenticity of the website is being guaranteed when there is a contact person. Now, I mean to say, if you go to Stanford or Calcutta University or Cambridge, you won't have immediately a person to uh, contact. But a semi, I would say semi-known websites should have a kind of a oh, uh, contact information, right? Fourth point, correct spelling and grammar. Correct spelling and grammar in the sense, if you talk of my college, whenever there's a recruiter or whenever I'm trying to help people on the websites, uh, I check the spelling and grammar. For example, if I am I, in my college, when some school or institute comes down for a recruitment drive or if they are uh, willing to come down to uh, construct a kind of a workshop on STEM or physics or mathematics, whatever, they write a mail to me, dear Mr. Shawnak dot 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 so and so. And if I find that there are spelling or grammatical mistakes, constructions of sentences are not done properly, I would doubt this company is coming for a STEM workshop. This company is willing to make a workshop on physics and mathematics, show their instruments and apparatus. There is an element of doubt. There is an element of suspicion. So the website should clearly reflect the spelling and the grammar. Now you might say this is physics and mathematics. Come on, we are not learning literature. But at each phase, seriousness is important. Even if you are writing a physics formula, even if you are writing a mathematical formula, if you make a grammatical or an error in terms of spelling, that means you are not serious. So websites which carry problems in terms of grammars or sentence making, I'm not saying that they're all bad or you should not go, but you need to check with that. And finally, online reviews. Uh, this is true for anything. If I uh, take my daughter to an admission to a college, a school, you're purchasing a product, a shampoo, or a air, um, you know, air con, whatever, then you need to go through the reviews. Same goes with the uh, case of, uh, I would say, uh, uh, websites, that please check the reviews. Reviews are fantastic. Reviews are given by teachers, students, especially the parents, how this website have helped them to study, how this website have helped their students to grow, how this website has helped to make calculations easier. So uh, these are few of the things which I would request that authenticity of the website, which should carry a HTTPS uh, a privacy policy, Best thing is that try to get in a contact of a person who can really, uh, you know, contact and interact 
correct spelling and grammar and online reviews that would be the best thing you can check on the online reviews which would help you to uh, make an idea about what this website is all about okay the last part of the website reading concerns this language of the website now this is very very important I am not going to name any website but I am just going to give you an example. Now suppose I am reading an astronomical post or uh, something which has happened in astronomy and the website says that discovered a, uh, a discovered an exoplanet okay, or discovered a planet like something okay, or a, a star has been found revolving around a planet like structure or an exoplanet or something like that. Okay. Now you see that when I when I talk about exoplanets or planet like structure you understand there is a significant difference on what is called a planet like structure or what is a, directly a planet. So an observation in Hubble or DWST telescope which has been made which surely says that it is a planet like structure definitely it will carry a significance that it is not a planet but somehow resembles a planet and if the telescope discover something which is like a planet or maybe an exoplanet then there is a difference so a planet like structure and a planet are not the same now what happens is that uh, you know most I, I won't say most but some of the websites you know websites are basically meant for gaining business there will be more advertisement and people will gain more right so in order to get the click in order to get the traffic some of the website puts something which is not actually true I would say something which is not actually true but this is put up in order to you and me and 20 50 thousand people will click on it and read that right so I'm not saying that doing this is wrong but as a student or a reader or a learner we should be aware about that that what actually is the discovery so the language of the website, some website will say discovered water. So if I say that uh, JWST or so and so telescope has discovered water on a planet, immediately, oh, oh, water, that means there is a chance of a life. Let me click and watch it. Let me click on something which says that discovered a black hole. But whether it is actually a black hole or it is probable to be a black hole or it resembles the characteristics of a black hole, it is very important so you will see in my website this which is open right now physics for students I always say the exact discovery and give a website or a, or a link to this one which is right on your screen it is called archive uh, which is very famous uh, most of the famous uh, you know preprint preppers papers are here including Grigory Perelman's so ARXIV this is a website of Cornell University you will see most of the uh, discoveries which are being done uh, I, I'm, I'm saying astronomical discoveries uh, uh, for this per, per se then they will I, I always try to give a link for this particular website now you go to the research paper of the group of researchers who are doing that research and then you feel oh no 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 it is not a planet it is maybe a planet like or it is resembling a planet but the discovery has not yet been confirmed so very important when you read through a website for any astronomical or astrophysical or any kind of a discovery go to the authentic website that is the research paper the problem for most of us is that we are not so technical we don't know mathematics so much that we will really understand those technical papers but I can tell you that if you go to the conclusion part you go if it's a 40 45 pages research paper you come down right at the bottom in the conclusion you will see the authors have clearly laid out hence the paper concludes that so and so discovery we are trying to get more data to prove that this is a black hole this is a supernova this is a planet this is an exoplanet dot 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 so when you are reading through a website uh, all the websites uh, they have a link to the original paper go to that paper read through it if you are unable to understand please consult a professor or a teacher that what the discovery is all about is it what the website is claiming or is it something which I really don't understand if you can please explain so most of the uh, you know I would say most of the articles that I write on this physics for students I put a link to ARXIV 
so that you are capable enough you have got the mathematical background that you can click there and you can see what the original uh, research paper claims because a little bit of knowledge is very dangerous than no knowledge there's a famous saying right so you get a little bit of knowledge from the website there is a water there is a black hole there is a supernova but when you go to the original research paper you find there is a difference so that is why i mentioned language of the website the language of the website in which the website owner is writing or the person is writing it creates a difference i'm not saying it is wrong but the problem is that they are also doing for a business they have a, a ulterior motto right so do check the authenticity of the research paper by going to the original research paper so that there is no misunderstanding so in this part of the video what i would like to show you are some of the authentic websites just to note that it is not that these are only the authentic website there are hundreds thousands maybe even more than that there are authentic websites on physics and mathematics these are the websites which i have found it extremely useful they are good authentic and give you a clear understanding of physics and mathematics first is the mit open courseware i have just given you an, a glimpse on the, on your screen you see that if, here you can search through any website uh, for example, on the left hand side, it is showing departments, physics, mathematics, earth, uh, then supplementary resources, chemistry, aeronautics, uh, all those things. I have had highlighted mathematics. So you can go and click on the mathematics or whatever the discipline that you want to go. And then it will, if you click on that, it will show you the syllabus, the calendar, the lecture notes and the assignments. So for example, I have just randomly selected algebraic topology and it will show you the lecture notes which I have highlighted on the left hand side uh, in red and if you click on those lecture notes now you see all of them are downloadable in PDF format free of cost so you see your introduction to singular simply says then homology uh, categories functions natural transformations homology starship regions categorical language all this that means that in MIT open course where if you go to a specific topic on the left hand side first you have to tick on the discipline that is which subject you want then you go and select on the lecture notes and you find all of this and without doubt I don't have to say you know we all know what MIT is all about one of the greatest and one of the best uh, universities and learning institutes in the world so you get that now uh, I, right on the screen you see there is called lecture videos now just to keep a note not all of the uh, subjects have got lecture videos in MIT but here you see lecture videos radiation history radiation utilizing technology so you can also get hold of the lecture notes so one is assignment second is lecture notes third is uh, you know uh, lecture videos so MIT open courseware no doubt is one of the most authentic best go there select the discipline you want and you can just click on them and you can find whatever you're looking into these are MIT's own courseware so there is no doubt in terms of authenticity next thing which I would like to show you is one of the best online learning platform it is called libertex.org now I just went through a little bit of research uh, I, most possibly it is uh, located in the US and Libertex actually is one of the biggest platform on internet which makes e-learning free of cost uh, I have consulted many of the mathematical calculations in Libertex here you see on your screen these are the uh, libraries biology business chemistry uh, geosciences humanities k-12 education uh, mathematics medicine physics and uh, social sciences so this is again a very very authentic website uh, all you need to do is that you go and click on mathematics then you go to the uh, subdivisions of mathematics algebra trigonometry geometry linear algebra these that relativity whatever in mathematics then you uh, subsequently click on that and you get a complete lesson plan at libertex.org lesson plan in the sense of pre-calculus what you need to know then calc 1 calc 2 calc 3 then you go to linear algebra pre-linear algebra then linear algebra advanced linear algebra matrices calculations i mean to say it is an enormous huge resource of learning physics mathematics or the related subjects so it is all free of cost it is 100 percent authentic and you can just check on their calculations just check on uh, you need to browse through uh, obviously it contains lot of topics subtopics this that whatever not 
you will find everything there at Libertex. Calculations are easy, calculations are simple, huge amount of graphs, animations, uh, you know, I would say illustrations are given. It is just an immense source of knowledge. Next, I would like to show you this one, which is also very good. It is called Khan Academy. All the uh, basic understanding of physics, mathematics and related subjects are given. A lot of uh, very good videos which are there on Khan Academy. There are a lot of texts on uh, Khan Academy. Again, as I was telling, Khan Academy is a very good resource of understanding. But be sure that you know that what they assume, that you know what would be the pre you know previous experiences, all those things. So absolutely no problem on that. Coming up next on your screen is a very important website, but this is more of an interactive website. I mean to say uh, Khan Academy, etc. I'm not saying that they do not revert you back, but it is mostly based on the conceptual learning, right? But if you go to this website, math text, uh, sorry, math.stackexchange.com, uh, this is a website where you can see I have just given you uh, explore our questions, real analysis, calculus, linear algebra and so on. It is one of the best, a great website where you can throw any kind of a question. You're stuck in calculations, any kind of a mathematical calculation, physics problem. You can just ask them what you want and they will reply. So mathstackexchange.com is a wonderful website. It is more of an interactive website. Go get things too. The next one is this, which is called stackoverflow.com. It is the same kind of an interactive website, a forum, which gives you a better kind of an understanding. Uh, any kind of a problem that you are stuck with, linear algebra, trigonometry, calculus, uh, you know, complex analysis, um, anything, you can just ask them question and they will answer. This one is equally important. I have been using this for quite, quite some time, almost seven, eight, seven, eight years or so. It is called physicsforums.com. Here you see that it has been segregated. Homework help is there. Science education and careers are there. Physics is there. Classical quantum beyond the standard model. Then astronomy and cosmology is given. Mathematics is also given. So this is again a more of an interactive website. I mean to say you won't find much of a, con I would say, uh, you know, concept based understanding. It is not much there. Uh, these are more on libertex.org, you go to Stanford University, you go to other websites which I have just shown you. These would contain uh, much more of a, uh, you know, I would say MIT Open Courseware, Stanford University, a lot of them. So these will give you a basic kind of an under concept bit understanding. But these websites, uh, for example, uh, mathstackexchange.com, stackoverflow, physicsforforum.com, these are websites which is more of an interaction. And I think interaction is much more important, right? Because when you're doing things, you get stuck up. Where will you go? I mean to say, if you are doing a self-study, you really don't have a professor or a teacher. Or even if you ask the professor, he or she might be busy. These are the websites where you can throw questions and you can get the answer. The last part of our video is what is called learning from videos. Now, first of all, I would like to tell you when you're learning from a video, I mean, it's obviously video means video on YouTube. There are two, three things you have to take care. I mean, this, this goes applicable to my channel, Physics for Students also. Now, when you're learning through a video, remember that a video's length can be 30, 35 minutes or an hour or so. I would recommend that go through a video which is a little bit longer in length. I would recommend uh, Professor Leonard Suskind's video, Feynman lectures, videos, all of those, right? But uh, most importantly, videos which are a little bit longer, I mean to say, they will, uh, you know, do not assume anything. You remember uh, in this video I just mentioned, let us not assume anything, right? So we, you should not, uh, you, it is better to go for videos which are longer, which assumes that uh, these things will be taught. Second is that there are videos of celebrated physicists and mathematicians where there are errors in calculations including me <laughs> let me tell you including me i may, many of my videos in tensor analysis etc i am thankful to you subscribers who have pointed me the mistake and i have corrected it and i have pinned there right on the comment box right so we are all human beings errors are okay but what is not okay is for an undergrad or a grad who is undergoing a basic concept of physics and mathematics you can go through the entire calculation and then find oh my goodness this is not right, this is wrong. 
So what do you do? You again have to go and redo the calculations. So here is a ready-made solution for you. I would recommend that when you go through the video, read the comments below. Read the comments below. Here on your screen, I will show you. This is, I don't want to name, but this is a very famous uh, person. I have full respect with him. But there are certain errors in those videos and it has been pointed out. You can see somebody called Aspen Lolo and uh, including me from Asian College and uh, by La Onza. So there are problems and I mean to say uh, it is natural, right? We are doing such big calculations over a long video. So there will be problems, there will be uh, errors, but before you go through the video, say for example, linear algebra lesson one, before you go through that video, please, please read the comment. If you see any error, you are aware. If you know that this um, video is not the right, there is a second video which the uh, creator has re remade. Just because there is a problem, go through that video. If you know the errors, you can understand. So, my advice to you would be in order to go for a video, please go through the comment box. Uh, go uh, scroll down below and go through the comment because there can be errors. And once you go through the entire video, learn the error, that is uh, that is a difficult thing, right? So better to be aware, go through the right video, you will find some of the videos writing correction in video 2. That means there is an error in video 1, which the creator has created and uh, corrected in video 2. Fine, I, I mean to say absolutely no problem. So go through the comments before going to the video. Uh, lastly, the last tip that I would like to give you is that follow one teacher. Most of us, because it is just like, uh, I would say, a kind of a market, right? You go to purchase a shirt in a market, you go through different brands, right? You go to Von Hausen, then you go to Arrow, you go to local markets, this, that. And you get confused that which shirt to buy. I mean to say, all of them look excellent. Some prices uh, is saying around $20, some is saying $18, some is saying $35. So, will I go for the $35 price because the price is more and the shirt will be definitely good? No, it is not like that. I would say just follow one teacher. If you're going through Professor Leonard Suskind's video, you will see uh, they complete the video through just one teacher. Why? Because that teacher has a convention, that teacher has a specific method, that teacher has a specific way of teaching and the complete video has been done by one specific teacher. Now, if you go through one teacher, then hop to the second and to the third and to the fourth, it will create a problem. Why it will create a problem? Because this Professor A is following a certain convention, which Professor B is not following, which Professor C is not following. So the problem is that each professor are saying, each of the teachers are saying the same thing. They are teaching the same concept, no problem on that. But there is a problem in terms of their approach, conventions, the way of teaching and they assume certain things. There is a prelude to the learning. So please be aware. I would always recommend that follow one teacher. One teacher, one lesson, complete that. You will be, it will be easy for you to understand. This is just a kind of a personal, uh, you know, I would say what, uh, request that I was recently going through one of the most beautiful and a great professors, uh, in, I, I would say, in teaching on linear algebra. It is called Math the Beautiful. And I was essentially con uh, consulting in order to get a more in-depth analysis of inner and outer product of linear algebra. Please, those who really want to go through, uh, I would say what, uh, linear algebra course, uh, go through this particular channel, Math the Beautiful. You will see a handsome professor with specs teaching linear algebra at its best. I'm telling you, teaching linear algebra at its best. He teaches with such an in-depth analysis, you won't be able to understand. I mean, so you won't be uh, able to comprehend what I'm saying. It is absolutely beautiful. It is. It takes you to what I'm saying. You would be taking those things at a different kind of a level. So Math the Beautiful is definitely a very good website. So uh, that is all what I need to tell you. What are the essential tips of learning from videos? To summarize uh, today's video, I won't be going topic by topic. But again, I would try to make a note that this particular video is not meant to discourage you that you should not go for a YouTube or an online learning. No, this particular video is made because I have suffered from certain problems, mistakes, etc. So before you go through the website, check the authenticity. Let us not assume anything. Please do understand that you need to check the calculation 
and select the websites which uh, makes you do problems that will give give you a better understanding check for the authenticity with the websites with the tips which i have given and when you're learning through uh, youtube videos make sure that you go through one teacher and and you you really read the comments below before jumping on a particular video i have also given you certain forum names which will help you to interact and learn more uh, on the on the on the on the physics and mathematics part conceptual learning is one thing interaction helps you to grow and clear confusion much much better remember websites are, riv are, are written and they are being constructed to make life easy but because it is being made by a certain particular individual so you need to get aware you need to be aware about those things which you should know or there should be a match between your learning and the website otherwise it creates a problem same goes with youtube videos also there should be a proper understanding between what you want and what the teacher is delivering every teacher is great every teacher should be respected every teacher has a great amount of effort in making those videos but whether your expectation and the delivery is matching all for all those i just told you what are the things that you need to do that's all thank you for watching this video please click on the bell icon and click on the all notifications to get all the notification from physics for students do put up your comments if you find certain other websites which will give you a better learning which is authentic which is better i would like to uh, take it up and put it as a suggestion in my video this is shonak signing off from physics for students wishing you a great endeavor in learning physics and mathematics through online wishing you a great day and a great week weekend ahead bye now you can be a part of our team you can send your scientific articles essays research papers lesson plans on a particular subject of science for further details please write to us at editor@physicsforstudents.com stay safe and happy